Hello and welcome to Nature Photography During Lockdown Part 6. In this episode, I'm going to edit the photos of the water droplets that I took in Part 4. If you haven't seen that, it's linked up over here. So go and have a look, come straight back because hopefully you've got some water droplet photos of your own that you are keen to edit. So don't go away. In episode four, I got quite a lot of photos that I was really, really happy with, uh, but I'm going to choose this one here. This is where I used the magenta shade of background. So I just put a card of uh, my wife's scrapbooking, scrapbooking paper that was magenta shade in the background. Now, this photo, I'm using this today because I just absolutely love the shape of this droplet here it's just quite amazing you can see it's got some light trails there from that's probably from the flash there's this green see this green trail here but i can fix that up we'll take that out in photoshop but just that shape of the droplet and the mound of water below it is just mwah, it's beautiful so we'll just do a few basic edits to it here in Lightroom now if you look at the histogram for starters you can see that it is a little bit underexposed um, a lot of the photos that I did get were a little bit underexposed and they this created a little bit of noise in it but I'm not too concerned about that because when I do the noise reduction it's going to make everything a lot smoother and it's going to look sweet so what we're going to do here is I might bring the exposure up just a little bit maybe to about there -ish. so there that's good contrast I won't touch just yet the highlights I'm going to bring down because they are clipping as you can see by the indicator up here this little arrow tells you if your highlights are clipping or not so if that's lit up you want to back off your highlights until it is not clipping anymore the shadows are not clipping they are fine I'm going to leave them alone with your whites hold alt or option if you're using a Mac left click with your mouse and hold and then drag down until you don't see any more spots on the screen here I may have to drag the highlights down a bit more here because I've still got that tiny red dot in the middle of the screen what I'm going to do is come back to the highlights. I'm going to drag them down a little, holding Alt again, left clicking and dragging until I get rid of those dots. Okay, there we go. And at any stage during your edit, just hit the backslash key to see the before and after to see what effect you're having on it. I'm liking it so far. So this is before, this is after. Okay, now uh, with the blacks again, hold Alt or Option if you're on a Mac left click your mouse and drag down until you get some color coming through you don't want too much this is more necessary if you're printing a photo off to have blacks and to have a black and white level that are correct it's not so important if you're sharing to the web so I just sort of pull it down to there's a little few spots of black in there and um, I keep an eye on my navigator up here to see what effect it's having over my image and then I'll just look at the before and after I might just click over here on the step before the black clipping just to see what effect it had yeah it gave it a bit of mood that's quite nice texture I'm not going to worry about in here or clarity I might try the clarity slider to see what it does no it's just brightening up my background and not really doing much else I don't really want that dehaze we do not need because it's just darkening things down and not really having a great effect the vibrance I might I could pull up a lot if I wanted to overdo the color but I don't really I might do just about 15 there and we'll see the before and after effect of that yeah that's okay and that is pretty much where I'm going to leave it for Lightroom I'm not going to do the detail at all doing nothing else in here now uh, remember that I do lens corrections on import so these are already done for me you can see they're clicked here remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections they're already done on import for me so uh, you will need to do those yourself now you probably could remove this trail this light trail here in uh, Lightroom but 
I'm not going to try and do that, I'm going to do that in Photoshop because it'll be much easier. But you, you would be able to do it with this stuff here, I would think. Let's just have a try. So what you do is you click the uh, little eyedropper there, click that. Let's uh, press Z to zoom in, space bar, click and hold it to zoom around. I'm going to click on this bit here, click. No, it says it can't do it. Yeah, see it's having trouble. So we'll do that in Light, we'll do that in Photoshop. So I've opened it up in Lightroom now and of course the first thing that you should always do is make a copy of your background layer. Now the way you can do that is by left clicking your mouse and dragging the layer strip down there to the plus, the little plus symbol down the bottom. Let go, that will make a copy of your background layer. Control or Command Z to undo. Then you can always press Control or Command on a Mac and J, that will create a duplicate of your background layer as well. Now the first thing that I want to do to this image is because we have here this, the line of the bowl in the background, because I had this in a circular bowl, it's really distracting to the eye to see that falling off to the left hand side there like that. So what I want to try to do to make it a little less distracting is uh, first I'm going to try and just level it. So make it so that that goes right across and then if that doesn't work, I'll just darken the whole background down so that we just can't see it. <laughs> so the way I'm going to do this is to first of all make a selection. So what I want to do is fill in all this area over here that is kind of dropping off. So what I'm going to, how I'm going to do that is to come up here to the lasso tool, selecting the lasso tool and I'm just going to just go around this area here like that and I might come up there and we'll see if this works. I'm not really sure if it's going to or not. I will try to do a content aware fill. So you come up here to edit, then down to content aware fill, left click that. And then it says to sample the area you want to choose it from. So I'm just going to make the brush a little bit smaller here by holding Alt or Option and right clicking with my mouse and dragging across. And then I'm going to just select this area here because I want this color to be reproduced over in that area, which it's doing, but we might need a little bit more from over here. We'll try that too. And you can play over here with your color adaption and your rotation adaption. This can help it to look better. So we'll change the color adaption to high. See what happens. That's kind of weird. It looks like it's not doing anything there. Change it to very high. Mm, no, I don't like that. I can try none. None looks reasonably good. Let's just try that. We can always fix it up. So I just press Control or Command D to deselect the selection that I had there. Yeah, so that's looking a little bit strange, but we can clean it up by using our spot healing brush. I always forget the name of the thing, the spot healing brush. We can try using the spot healing brush, holding Alt or Option, right clicking my mouse and holding it dragging it to the right to make my brush bigger. I'm going to make it softer as well by pushing my mouse forward. And then I'm just going to run it across there and see what it does. It's, no, it's sampling from outside of there. Mm, it's really not working well. I'm going to control Z to undo all of those steps. Control D to deselect that. So that wasn't working, so what I'm gonna try now is to use a tool that I don't use very much, which is the Content Aware Move tool over here. It's these two little arrows crisscrossing over each other. So just select that by left clicking it. Now what you can do with this tool is you can select and move a certain area of your image and it will Content Aware fill the gap that's left behind. So what I'm going to do is just grab this edge here and just sort of 
move it and rotate it till it's level and makes it sort of match up with the other side. So you just left click and drag around there holding your mouse button and select that. Then you left click inside of that selection, hold the mouse button and just push the bit, move your mouse, sorry, to where you want it to be. Let go and then it'll bring up these transform uh, edges here and you can just move it to where you need it so it will bring it down a bit maybe that looks pretty good and then just click on the tick up the top here to say yes you want to do that and then control oh we'll wait for it to do its magic and then control or command D to deselect that looks like I might have taken it a little bit too far beyond level so I'm going to control or command Z to undo that and we'll try again so just left clicking and holding drag it up just make it level that looks a bit better we'll try that one just wait for it to fill in the bits left behind and control D to deselect. That's looking pretty good. Just needs a little bit of a cleanup in this section here because you can see there's a you can see the line there where the selection ended. But apart from that, it's fairly good. So I'm going to get the spot healing brush and I'll just go. I might actually just get the healing brush tool here and do this. We'll just. Um, so with the healing brush tool you have to press alt or option and hold it and then left click to select from a certain area that you want to use to fill in another area. So that's quite good. I think that looks pretty decent. It almost looks like water because it's not level, you know, it seems to, it flows here so it kind of looks like the water was moving in the background. I kind of like that. I'm going to leave that like that. Now the next things that we need to fix up here are of course this light trail here and there's a couple of lens flares that happened here that I don't really like. They could possibly be water droplets that were just out of the focal plane but I don't think so. I think that's a lens flare. So I'm going to click and copy this layer. I'm going to label this one here. Um, what should we say? Water level I'll call it. Water level. So to name a layer, you just double click, left click, two times fast to change the name of your layer. We'll call this one here, um, I'll just call it cleaning because <laughs> I'm cleaning up things here. All right, so first thing we need to do is try and get rid of this color. Now it's going to be a little bit tricky because it's really close to the edge of the water droplet. But what I can do and what I will try to do first of all is just paint over it with a color and see if that works. I could even, I could actually use the clone tool to do this. We'll try the clone tool. So go over here to this little tool here. This is the clone stamp tool. What you do with the clone stamp tool is hold Alt or Option on your Mac. Again, left click once in the area that you want to sample from. And then you come over here. You can also change your brush hardness and stuff. I'm going to make it fairly hard here because I want, I have to go in near the edge of the water droplet and we'll just paint that color in there. Just clicking a couple of times around there. We'll just sample from here and drag that down. This is getting rid of it just nicely. Thank you very much. We'll so keep clicking, alt clicking or option uh, as much as you can to make sure that you're selecting mm, my brush is too hard. Can you see see the edges there that I'm getting? I'm getting these, uh, oh, sorry, the tool's in the way now. Uh, I'll just select the hand tool for a second. So see these edges here? That's the edge of my brush. It's too hard. So what I need to do is make my brush a lot softer. So. I'll go back to my clone stamp tool. I'll just make it about 30% hardness there and then I'll click again and try again. Here we go. This is pretty good. 
What you can do to make this a little bit faster is make a selection of the water droplet before you start painting and then you just you can just invert that selection and that will select everything around the water droplet then you can paint like crazy and not worry about going over the top of the water droplet but I'm not too concerned I'm just being very careful here and making sure that I don't you know go too close to the droplet there that's mm, I don't like that last bit that I did that made a bit of strange color down there just get this bit in here a little bit, just clicking once or twice there. Over here we have some as well, so I'll alt click over here and just bring that down there. We'll just, whoop, no, no, no. Just alt click right next to this here, just drag down. That's okay, a bit over there. There's some down here as well, I see. So we'll just get that, of course there's a bit um, what am I going to do with this? Try that there. That's okay. There's, it's a little bit too obvious down here. I just want to fix that. Okay, so turning that layer on and off just by clicking the eyeball there, we can see the before and the after. So that's got rid of that. There is still color in here. A little bit and it's kind of a bit obvious you can see faint edges of the clone tool there and I don't really like that but I think it's okay what I might do is just make it a little bit softer and we'll just try and fix them up a little that's better just fix this one up here too I can see the edge of the brush where it was where I had its hardness set to hard in the beginning that is pretty good I'm going to leave the color in there I'm not really concerned about it I can fix that later with a color overlay or something so that's looking pretty good for now that's looking quite good what I'm going to do now is I'm going to darken that background a little because I don't like firstly I don't like the uneven light how it goes from bright to dark over here and it's just too distracting I want this background to be a little bit darker so that the water droplet itself stand really pops out at you actually before I do that I need to get rid of these lens flares here that I forgot to so I will just use the spot healing brush for those we'll just there we go mm, looking not very good when this fails me what I do is I grab the lasso tool I just select around the area that I want and I come up to edit content aware fill and I just use this because it's it's quite powerful so we'll just select a bit over there and maybe a bit over there for it to select from and see what happens it's not too bad I'll change the color adaption maybe the rotation adaption too just to see mm, maybe not come on Photoshop <laughs> not doing a great job yeah don't like it control D to deselect I'm just going to use the clone tool again I'm, I'm having success with the clone tool today so I'll just alt click there just paint over this bit here alt click there paint over this bit there alt click there or option if you're on the Mac of course Alt or Option clicking there, just that looks a bit better, a little bit less distracting. Now I've got these bits over here as well that I'll do, I'll just Alt click there and I might just click once and that should, mm, didn't, should have got rid of it. That is good, there we go, okay that's done now, so before, after, looking good. Now what I'm going to do is make a selection of, what I'll try and do is make a selection of the, uh, I'm going to grab my quick selection tool here. So over here I've been using the magic wand tool before, so it's the icon for the magic wand tool is there, but we'll select the quick selection tool. If you left click your mouse and hold, these options will pop out, or you can also right click on the mouse and they will pop out there for you left click to select 
I'm just going to drag this across the background here. Nope, it doesn't like that. It tried to select everything. And try it again. Mm, no, nah, it's going to just try and select everything. So I'll undo that. What I will do is use maybe the lasso tool and I'll make a I might do just a rough selection here with the lasso tool. Just going all the way around. Just rough as guts. I don't care what it looks like. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is go up here to select and I'm going to try select similar. I'm not sure if this is the best thing to do here, but no, it's not. That was a bad idea. So what I might do is just go in and just clean up this selection. I'll go into selected mask up here. So clicking on selected mask and I'll just have to go in here and sort of clean this up, get a little bit closer to the droplet here. Now I want to select the brush tool first. So I'll choose that icon there. This is the third one down on the left there. That's the brush tool and holding alter option just making my brush more yeah I'll make it fairly soft so maybe about 40 percent and make sure and we'll paint in around this water droplet here just getting I don't want to oh I've gone a bit too close there controls or command Z to undo so you just got to be fairly careful mm, that's not really great either it's not going to matter a great deal because I'm doing just going to do a curves adjustment layer to darken the background behind this. But I do, you know, I do want to have it kind of a reasonably good selection. Now, to just to clean up these edges here, I'm going to hold Alt or Option, keep it held down and just that will take away from your selection or subtract from your selection. It's really hard to just get this edge here. I'm going to just try and leave the edge exposed just a little bit there. And because I'm going to feather this quite a lot, so it blends in well. So we'll see what happens. So let's say we're happy with that selection. And we're going to come over here to our global refinements and I'm going to feather this quite a great deal as I said so we'll see what happens when I bring up the feathering I just wanted to bleed into that edge of that droplet there so I'm going to leave the feathering maybe about 24.6 let's try that I'm going to output this to a selection so I'll click OK there and that is my selection now I can just click down here on the adjustments layer icon and we'll create a curves adjustment layer and that will come up with that mask already applied and then I can just click on the graph here and drag this down and that is having a wonderful effect except for here obviously because of our mask but we can fix that within the mask I don't want it to be too over the top but so you can turn your eyeball on and off here to see the effects of before and after if you like for after yeah so what I might do is go into the mask here make sure your mask is selected by clicking on it hit B on your keyboard for brush or you can come over here and choose your brush tool over there and what I'm going to do is paint with white because I want to reveal more of this layer. I'm just going to bring more of that into this here, into our, and fix that up and make that look a little bit more realistic, maybe a bit in there too. That's looking quite nice. I still have the uneven shading here so it's going from light to dark and I don't like that so I may have to fix that and I can still see a little halo around 
little droplet here so I might just go in here with my brush and just get rid of that it doesn't matter if I darken the edge of the droplet a little bit that looks okay so before after that's quite good what I'm going to do now is just darken down that right edge so what I'll do to do that is I'll just create another curves adjustment layer curves there we go I'm going to invert the mask on this and then I'm going to brush it in so I'm going to make a completely black mask but first of all I want to try and match to the color to the other side so I'm going to bring it down to maybe there ish maybe there we'll see what happens I think about there is good so I'll close that and I'll click on the mask there and I will press Control or Command I that inverts the mask so the mask is completely black we can't see any of this curves layer showing down onto the layers below selecting my brush again painting with my foreground color as white if your foreground and background color are not white you can click this little icon here that resets them to black and white and you can click these two little arrows here to switch from foreground to background color if you like not when you've got that open <laughs> you can switch now or you can press X on your keyboard to switch from foreground to background color I'm going to make a very very large brush here by holding alt or option and right clicking and holding my mouse and dragging it make sure it's zero percent hardness and that is way too hard what I'm going to do the problem there was my flow is at hundred percent which means my brush paints full all the time just gives it a hundred percent so I'm going to back this off to about maybe ten percent here eight percent will do and then try again just paint and you can see it just gradually brings in the effect which is what we want we don't want to be painting it in too much I'm going to make a smaller brush just bring it in here a little up over that there just going to give it a lot up in this corner because that was not great. I've got some serious color issues in the background here, but yeah, you can see. I'm not sure if you can see this in the video, but I'm getting color banding in here. I'm getting little uh, bands of color noise in there and I don't want that obviously so what I'm going to try and do is maybe I'm going to delete that curves layer and I'm going to create another curves layer this but this time I'm going to give it a gradient a mask with a gradient overlay so that it gradually goes from dark to light right across the image there so let's just play with our curves by double clicking on the little icon there left clicking hold and drag it down just a tad because if I go too far I get that color banding and I don't really want that that is not too bad I don't mind that let's leave it at that now click on our mask there and you want to come over here to your gradient tool click on that we're going to select something that goes from fairly dark to maybe that one there from dark to very dark to very white so that we get a good transition here and we're going to maybe click from there across clicking left clicking holding and dragging it across let go and that has Darken that right hand side down just a little, but I'm still seeing banding here. I'm seeing vertical banding now from that darker layer. Yeah, I wonder why. What's my my image mode? It's in 16 bit. It shouldn't be doing that. Hmm, not really sure why that's happening, but I can just back it off I'll back the opacity off and that'll make it a little bit better so we've still got a little bit of light over there but it, I think it's better than it was if I turn those layers off altogether that's what it was 
that's what it is now so that is pretty good what I'm going to do now is to uh, put some noise reduction on this and also some sharpening and then I think we're pretty much done I could dodge and burn if I wanted to but we might be here for a long time I'm just gonna try and keep this fairly simple so what I do now is control alt shift that's command option shift on a Mac and then hold those down hit the E key that creates a visible stamped layer so it takes all these lower layers and combines them all together into one layer at the top so now we can go up to uh, our filters coming down here to Topaz Denoise this is the noise reduction program that I use it's a plug-in for Photoshop they have an amazing version called Topaz Denoise AI now which is absolutely amazing I'm noticing some chromatic aberration when I get in here too you see these purple fringes around here these magenta shades I might have to get rid of that before I do this so I'll cancel out of there and I will go in here and I will delete that layer I will come down here to the adjustments layers icon and I will create a hue saturation layer click the little hand here with the two arrows on it click bring the eyedropper over to the shade of color that we want to get rid of so we can click there click left clicking and holding it dragging it down now this is of course going to remove all the magenta from our background as well because we had so I'm just going to bring it to a point where I'm happy with it. I think that's pretty good for the water droplet. So you can see if I uh, control uh, zero to make it fit to the screen, you can see it's made our background very gray, which is a nice effect, but it's not kind of what I was after. So I'm going to invert the mask here by pressing control or command I. And I'm just going to get my brush by pressing B and I'm going to make sure my foreground color is white and my flow I'm going to turn up to about maybe 50% 60% this time zooming in and I'm just going to brush this in over the water droplet where I wanted it to be so I'm not affecting the background I'm just getting that magenta out of the water droplet there there's probably some down here too we'll just go in there that's good yeah control zero to make it fit to the screen that looks pretty good although I've taken out a little bit of that coloration in the middle there so I might hit X and I'll just bring back some of that magenta in there just not around the bright areas but just in that darker middle bit because it it's really effective that color showing through there that's better okay now I can press control or command alt or option shift and E to make our visible stamped layer and I'll go back up to filter come down to my dope as denoise so there's a link in the video description below if you want to pick up uh, Topaz Denoise AI it's an amazing noise reduction program with uh, artificial intelligence that just it reads it analyzes the image and it can tell the difference between noise and what's not noise and it it's just incredible for high ISO images so I really suggest you check it out you can get a free 30-day trial so it's a no-brainer so there's a link in the video description for that I'm just going to dial up this until I see no noise and I'm going to clean the color as well because I think we've still got a little bit of color noise in there we're going to clean that a bit more and I can see here color problems in the background there a little bit so I'm just going to leave that and pretend I don't see it <laughs> okay I think that's good that's the before that's the after I just click OK and Topaz Denoise will fix that up for me and then it will bring us back into Photoshop and then we can do some sharpening and we're done on this image now I'm going to give 
uh, nature photography during lockdown a little bit of a break after this episode because here for us right now lockdown has finished we are allowed to go out uh, in groups of 10 and so I am very keen to get outside to do some photography <laughs> so I'm going to do that and uh, I'm going to give this a little bit of a break but I may come back and do just a couple of episodes around indoor photography if the weather gets bad but while it's good weather and I'm allowed out I'm getting out there people so next week I'll be back out in nature taking some photos and showing you stuff so there we go our denoise is done so I'll double click this call it denoise and then I will duplicate that layer and so I put my sharpening on a separate layer call it sharpen come up here to filter down to sharpen unsharp mask and we're just going to probably sharpen just the edge of the droplet here because I like this glassy look that the that the denoise has given it mm, that's pretty good I like that at 82 I'm I might crank it up just to 100 we'll see what the effect of that is so you can turn on and off your preview here that shows you in the larger window behind what the effect looks like when it's not there and when it is there mm, yeah it's a bit too much I'm gonna back it off to about 90 and we'll click OK all right the banding is really bothering me so I'm going to uh, get rid of it now the easiest way to do this is uh, to quite simply come up to image mode and go across you can see that the image is in 16 bits we can make it if we click on 32 bits change it to 32 bits it will get rid of that banding automatically now it's asking us if we want to flatten the image now what this does is just takes all your layers and flattens them together makes one layer from the whole lot so we just click flatten and you can see that banding is instantly gone uh, it's if I zoom into you know 100% here by pressing control or command 1 and I just hold my spacebar and click and drag around left clicking and dragging it's looking pretty good there's just a, there's a slight bit of banding in here but unless you're looking at it at 100% you're not going to know so that's where I'm going to leave it here for this photo because this video is already really really long so I don't want to keep you any longer I'm really happy with the result of this considering that I've never done water droplet photography before I got some really great results I hope that you did too let me know if you did in the comments drop a comment down below and let me know if you have taken some really good water droplet photos if you haven't seen episode 4 it was linked up at the start of the video it will be linked up at the end of this video too so go and have a look at it and if you follow the steps in that video you'll get really good photos like this yourself as I said nature photography during lockdown is done for a while because I am getting outside people I'm back into nature taking photos of birds and and whatever I can find I'm gonna go out my I just I vow that my videos from now on will be done outside so because we are not in lockdown anymore if you are I hope that you get out soon I hope that you are healthy and well and that everything is going okay where you live uh, so that's it until next time I'm Barry Callister for Barry Callister photography and photographers freedom get out there if you can take some wicked shots and I'll see you soon bye <laughs>